Hi, this is Craig Hockenberry. I'm here today to show you some stuff we've been working on uh, in Xscope for the Apple Watch. I'd like to start off by explaining all these windows that you see here. On the left is a copy of Photoshop, editing uh, some user interfaces and some assets. To the right of that is uh, Xscope, our Mac application for designers and developers. Below that is the iOS simulator. Um, I'm just using that instead of the actual iOS device because it makes it easy to see everything happening on one screen at a time. To the right of that, again, is another simulator. This one is for the Apple Watch, which is running our new Xscope watch app. Um, so what what is this mock up here? We're, we're thinking about making a watch app that has three screenfuls of information and think about different kinds of UI that we might want to see on that that user interface. So the f first step is to actually get these this interface uh, onto our iOS device. As you can see already the uh, Xscope mirror running on the, the Mac has detected that it's connected to Photoshop and is, is has, has the image there. So the next step is to actually connect to my development machine from the iOS device and display that image. And there it is. So let's start adding some some content to this. You know, so it's like we're thinking, okay, maybe we're gonna have a black background for this content. And we'll get some labels there. You can see that it, it, it updates immediately on the iOS device, which is really great because this is this is basically your first chance to to check your designs um, for the watch. You'll notice that the size of these rectangles for the simulators in, in the two simulators is essentially the same. Um, the resolution of the Apple Watch screen and the iOS device screens are essentially the same. So you can get an idea for you know the sizing of elements and that kind of thing. Um, Real, real quickly by looking at it on the iOS device. So let's add a little bit more content here. You know, we've got something that we're, we're happy with on our iOS device. So all we have to do to see it on our watch is go over to the watch's screen and tap to refresh. And there it is. It shows up um, as it would on, on the watch. Anytime we tap on that screen, it'll refresh again. or we can scroll through it. It's a little hard to, to do these taps on the iOS simulator, but uh, it's a lot easier to do it on a on an actual watch. So let's try some other content for this this image. Or for this mock-up. Well again this is that pre-flighting I'm talking about. You know you can immediately tell on the iOS device that that label just doesn't have a high enough contrast. Um, so without even having to try it on the watch, we could say let's add a little background there. This also gives you a chance to compare the two. Right? You can look at the previous uh, previous layout and the, the, the new content and compare the two. When you're happy, you can just tap on it and load it and you know scroll around through it again. The Apple Watch app is not like the iOS app. The, this user interface here constantly refreshes. Uh, the one here is, is taking a, an approach where you have to tap to refresh. The main reason for that is the Apple Watch is very aggressive about uh, power management. You know, it's going to turn the screen off as much as it can. Um, also, there's a Bluetooth connection where this image data is transferred from the iOS device to the to the to the watch. So, you know that takes a, a little bit more time than the than the Wi-Fi connection that goes from the Mac to the iOS device. So again, you know you just tap to refresh. Um, so that's what it's like to be working with a mock-up. Um, there's a lot more to iOS apps than, than just these. 
kinds of mock-up work. We also you know, have to deal with assets that we create in Photoshop and have to then view on the, on the watch. Um, this is an example here. This is an 80 by 80 pixel image that we're working in Photoshop. And we're thinking that's going to be a good home screen icon. Now we can test it here on our Iowa simulator. It's already updated there. But you'll notice that it's square. Um, it's against a uh, different background here. You know, it's, it's a grayish background here. It's our default Xcope background. What we really want to see is what that looks like with a, in a circle on, on a black background. And that's, that's the size that it would appear on the uh, on the home screen um, this behavior this compositing it against a black background is done for all of the standard icon sizes the long look the short look the uh, and the various notification icons so it's a real good way to, to check your your work before you actually have to do a build in fact, you know, we can look at that and say, you know, it's it's kind of missing something. And again, this is shows you the iterative capabilities. You know, we can come over here. We can modify our image, add a little something, and then quickly test it over on the watch just by tapping on the screen. So we could say that's you know that's a lot better home screen icon. Um, so far, I've just been showing you how this this functionality works with Photoshop which is a pretty important part of our development work but um, we also deal with Xcode projects that have loose assets and, and folders and it's kinda nice to be able to test those without having to do a, a build um, for example here's a one of our refresh menu icons um, this actually shows up on a menu button in, in one of our apps and again you know that's not really the way you want to see it right you know that, that that's going to have a, a black shape on a white circle so the Xcope mirror app is smart enough to recognize that and then just composite it as it would be on the watch again making it really easy to, to test and verify your assets um, we found it's actually a, a really good way to to find bugs too you know, here's a short look icon that came from one of our designers last week and you know you could say well that looks okay there but then you look at it on the watch it's like well why isn't that in a circle turns out that um, the designer who had not made a lot of Apple watch icons in his life made the image 174 pixels square instead of 172 pixels so he quickly fixed that we can also change the design in the process and now when we test it on the watch everything looks great last thing um, that I want to show you is uh, s uh, some new templates we've added uh, in Xcope 4 we added this notion of templates which lets you really quickly view what an icon is going to look like in diff different scenarios so there you know like it's you know, how does this thing look on the setting screen or the home screen? Well, now we've added a new one called My Watch, which displays it with the, again, with the round edges and something that looks like the My Watch interface. Um, you know, this is also something we can use with Photoshop. Again, select My Watch, and there's what our potential home screen icon is going to look on the iOS app that, that can control it. Um, that's it. And all of the stuff you've seen here is, is like everything else in Xscope. You know, we, we built it because we needed it. Right? We're do actively doing Apple Watch development now and, and a lot of these tools that you see uh, in not only Xscope but the bezel to the right is you know stuff that we've needed and 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 built to, to solve the problem um, these changes to the xscope mirror are going to be a free update uh, available on the app store and hopefully with any luck we'll be there um, the day that the apple watch launches 
Thanks for your time. Bye.